Radio, good people, we're back again. I just wanted to first thank you again for your continued support. Without you, this is not possible. Uh, please carry on liking, sharing, subscribing. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's what allows the show to go on. Uh, we um, are trying to get the best guests we can for you and which, and which I think we continue to do week in, week out. Please leave a suggestion in the comments below of who you would like to see on the show, the sort of things you want, to be, you, you want us to be talking about. Um, because if there's no suggestions, I'm assuming I'm just doing a great job, you know? So please, so please keep, so keep those suggestions coming and guests and, and some guests and some guests, some rec um, recommendations. Now uh, today, we are joined by the great man, uh, the great man of Zimbabwe rugby, uh, the, 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 the captain of our rugby sables team, Mr. Hilton Buriki. Hey, hey, the guy. Uh, Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome to the show. Appreciate it, bro. You know, guys, it's obviously so dope to have Hilton on board. Um, and let's and let's hear what he's got to say about our Zim setup, our Zim rugby setup, our Zim sports setup in, 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 our, in our general. Um, and um, just what the man's up to and what he's about. So, um, yeah, let's get excited, get into the pod. Radio, good people, welcome podcast with Perry. Um, as you've seen, I'm joined here by the captain of our Sables rugby team, Hilton Muriki. H, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks a lot for having me on the show, Perry. Um, it's great to have you. It's great to have you. Just just before we started this interview, um, H, H, you said to me, um, it was this going to be a Cristiano Ronaldo interview where I spill all the beads and, <laughs> and, and I lose uh, lose my job? And I said, hey, H, are you sure? No, listen, I'm not ready to lose my job. I think I've still got a few more years in me, so uh, I'll try to keep it as clean as possible. But we'll give the people what they want. Give the people what they want. This yeah. is this is what the show is about. We want to give the people what they want to hear. All right. Um, H, thank you so much for coming on. You know, I think. It's um, I think it's great to have to have um, le um leaders in sport, especially in Zimbabwe. I think I think sport is one thing in Zimbabwe that that can really unite a nation mm -hmm. and bring people together. And you being in the forefront of that, alongside other alongside other sportsmen and other athletes in different industries, um, I would just love to hear a bit um, uh, you know, uh, on your opinion of. Where where the landscape of Zimbabwean sport is at the moment? What what's 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 our Zimbabwean <clears throat> landscape in regards to sport? Look, I mean, there's no um, and lying about it that we have so many talented sportsmen and women in this country, um, and unfortunately, you know, we we keep losing them um, to different countries or to them uh, not pursuing their dreams because you know there's not a lot of money uh, within Zimbabwe in sport. Yeah. Uh, so people can't really make a, a living out of it. You're always having to do something. So. In terms of the landscape in itself, you know, there is uh, room for a lot of improvement, but um, geez, we've got so, so much to, to do and so much to work on to get to where we should be. Um, and that it comes with retaining our, our athletes. We've, um, we breed some of the most talented athletes in the world, you know, and, um, and obviously you and you being one of them, age. Uh, and I want to know about your sports journey, yep. where, sort of where you started, why, um, why, why, why you chose sport as a career. You know, for me personally, mm. if I could go to work in my shorts and t-shirt every day <laughs> and run around a paddock, you know, I would, I would be a happy man and what, and what, and what a feeling. But, but, but how did you come into sport and what, and what sort of propelled you to where you are now? I think the sports journey um, started, uh, you know, when I probably grade grade one actually um, when I was at the Heritage um, got there I didn't really come from a, a sporty family yeah. um, but I know one thing is that I like being outdoors I like being outside um, hated being in the classroom um, so just through meeting some people and some friends well, yeah, so. yeah yo times are tough out there brother <laughs> <laughs> yo I was, like, I was happy on the sports field you know I got no I'm joking I got by it in class oh, wait, but someone says I hated the classroom you oh, know man, like, oh, listen, like... <laughs> I would just be sat there just looking outside waiting for, for break time to go you know um, throw a rugby ball around or football yeah. so I grew up enjoying all sports um, and I think just through interaction with, with people friends that I made at the time um they kind of just got me to sports. So like going to like, um, you know, those sports camps, those yes. mini camps on like a Saturday. Um, my parents got me going to that. And then that's where I really started like getting into it. Um, but I would say like going this, this, uh, this route and this career um, was probably when I went to school in South Africa. That was like it for me. That, that, that's when I decided, okay, this is what I want to do as a, as a full-time job. Going for it. 
Hundred percent. Yeah. You went to Michael House and when you when you left, yeah. I went to Michael House. Um. So sorry. From let me just backtrack. So from Heritage, I did my grade one to grade five. Then I went to St John's, uh, grade six to seven, where we saw met. the light. Saw, yeah. <laughs> I saw, saw the, the light. light. Yeah. I think everyone did. Yeah. Um. And I really enjoyed my time over there. Um. And then you know the the family and I made a very big decision uh, for me to go to boarding school. Um. To South Africa. Um. Very, very tough first couple of months. Um, never been away from home. I, I was always a day boy. Uh, now I'm having to go to boarding school. Uh, bit of a mommy's boy, I won't lie. Yeah. Um, so now, you know, being away from family um, and having to start this new life by myself in a new country um, was always tough, but best decision I ever made um, going to Michael House. And I think... Um you you obviously went to Michael House with 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 your brother Farai, or he yeah. went to Crawford, eh? Was he, it called Court 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 Wallace? Court, Court Wallace, Court Wallace, Court Wallace yeah. yes. And it's crazy. He went he went to boarding school and he was like grade three. Uh, That's or wild. Grade four, something like that. Because he so, left us in grade three to go to go straight there. Straight there, and he never had a problem, eh? My brother's always been a, a person who uh, kind of gets on by himself, and he he's not faced by too many things. Um, so yeah, he went there from a very young age and, and enjoyed it and really excelled. And then, um, so you went, so you went, you went on to Michael House, and you, you excelled in your sports there. Man, I'm mainly in rugby and cricket, I yeah, believe. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so big cricketer, big, uh, big, I'm um, big rugby player. So, so you can see, it's always obviously been a passion of yours mm. to, um, to uh, be out there, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, there's obviously a big derby day, um, Hilton yeah. Michael House. You and you'd have played, you, 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 you'd have played with some. You played with with Pat Lambie, didn't you? I played with Pat. Actually, well, not rugby, but I played cricket with Pat. Okay. Pat was my uh, my captain for cricket. Yeah. Um, so, it's funny because I actually excelled more at cricket um, at Michael House than I did rugby. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah. Your batsman bowler. Uh, batsman wicket keeper. Okay. So I started playing uh, first team from like the age of sixteen, which was like not really heard of. Um, so I really did well with my cricket, um, played Natal schools and that kind of stuff. So I played with Pat, but then, um, the, some of the guys that I played against, um, in my, in my grade 11 year, grade 12 year matric, um, uh, my matric year, some of the guys are playing Springboks now. Like I played with Sia, uh, Khaleesi, who's obviously the, the Springbok captain, yes. played against Eben, um, and a lot, and a lot of those guys. So, uh, you know, we've kind of gone through the age groups together. Jeez, I would have buried them. If I could. I would have buried <laughs> them. Dropped his shoulder. Would have dropped his shoulder. <laughs> feel, feel, feel this concrete boy. Mate, you, know? you don't understand how much of a BC I was at school. Was he a Jeez, big boy. It was ridiculous. Is it? He was ridiculous. He was ridiculous. Um, so okay, so so you obviously so Hilton my class, obviously big a, a big derby down in yep. South Africa, um, which is which is and, and we hear about it all over the world a couple thousand people. What 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 five thousand people? Made more. Yeah. Looking at like 10, 15 k. 10, 15k at a schoolboy rugby game. That's ridiculous. It's it's crazy. It's probably one of the best feelings uh, that I've ever experienced. Um, just like being on the field. And I remember in my... You should never give schoolboys that much, but no one man should have all that bro, power. It's, it's hey, crazy. how, how it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. 15,000 people. It's, it's wild, bro. It's wild. Sorry, carry on there. And um, one of the best feelings ever was... Um, I'll tell you a little story uh, quick. My, my, my final year, um, a trick, we're playing away at Hilton. 15,000 people. It's packed out. Uh, we beat them in the first uh, in the first leg, so, uh, return leg. Um, we're under a bit of pressure, and uh, we get a penalty. I think we're behind by two points. Uh, the game's almost done. We get a penalty, and I don't know what was going on in my head. I took a quick tap, and this penalty was probably on the ten, directly in front, um, and I was the kicker as well. Yeah. So now I was like, "Oh crap! What have I done?" Take a tap, and I froze. And then I, I had to play, obviously. So I played, got tackled. And then um, one of my mates from Hilton was playing against. I uh, was like, well done, Hilton, you've just costed for my class. I was just like, oh my gosh. And we carry on playing a couple phases. We get another penalty. This is now on the five in the corner, uh, about 30 meters out. And I was just like, okay, obviously our captain signals poles. I'm like, dude, I have to get this. If I don't get this, it's I've, on me. Uh, yeah. And we hadn't lost to Hilton, I think, in uh, seven or eight years. So we had beaten them for seven or eight years. So it would have been on me. <laughs> Literally placed this thing, kicked it, went straight down the middle. Come on. Oh man, best hey. feeling ever. Oh my god. I was a hero. I did not buy any beers that night. <laughs> <laughs> I did Jeez. not buy any beers that night. I love that. I but yeah, that. that's like some of the, the memories that I'll that I'll they keep for a very long time. Um, you know, having beaten Hilton uh, 
in four games. So we played them uh, four times in my in my first team career. Won all of them. So you know, things like that is the stuff that I remember. So forever. you wear on your badge. You wear it with pride. You know? Yeah, hundred um, percent. And uh, H. So then also after, after school, what um what um did you ever study? Did you go? Did you what what? Yeah. Um, so after school, obviously I had to make the decision between rugby and cricket. Yeah. Um, went the rugby route. I got a contract to Western Province. Uh, so my first year there, and my, I played under nineteen Curry Cup. Um, I was just playing rugby full time. Um, and then after that, um, I didn't get an under twenty. Uh, I didn't get an under twenty-one contract, but I played a couple of under twenty-one games. Um, that's when I actually got to play with with Sia and Eben and all those guys. I actually played in the same team as them, which yeah. was pretty cool. Um, and then when I turned twenty-one, the year after, didn't get a contract again. Um, I was there, there about in the mix, um, but I wasn't really um, cracking it. And I felt like you know, if I went elsewhere. Uh, might be able to crack it. So I got an opportunity to go to Saracens for, for six months, okay, uh, which was awesome. Um, really enjoyed that. I got to train with, um, you know, the greats of the greats. Uh, John Smith was still playing at the time. Um, Skulk Brits was still there. Neil DeCock was still wow. there. So yeah. I got to um, experience, you know, a bit of time with those guys. Um, and then I made the decision to come back to South Africa and go to university. Uh, Varsity Cup is obviously a big thing yes. in South Africa. Yeah. Um, and I thought, you know, what better way to get my, my degree, but also at the same time, uh, play really good rugby. Yes. Um, so I went that route, um, spent three very good years at UJ, um, very successful, did very well there. Um, and that opened up an opportunity for me to uh, sign a contract with Jersey Reds, um, who are in the UK, um, in the championship, which is um, just one below the premiership. Yes. Um, so that was, um, that, was, that was awesome. So I managed to, to get my studying done. Um, and and play really good and rugby. Play rugby at the same time. Yeah, it's it's quite it's quite tough just to crack any professional sport at all. Yeah. you know, um, and you think how, the amount of people that are trying to become professional athletes, um, playing at the highest level. It's you know every every one of that level is working hard. Mm. You, know, you, know, you know, everyone's training, everyone's big, but then also being in a position like scrum half per se. You yeah. know where where there's one of you on the field, similar mm. to a fly-off or, or a hooker. But I mean, you know, if you're a fly-off, quite often you're only a fly-off. Yes. If, like if you're other positions, you can, you can diversify a bit, you know, if you, you know and, you can, and you can mix in and out. Yeah. Um, and, being, and being at Scrum Half, how, how have you found that, um, how, like how competitive is it to crack it at that position in the, on the big stage? Oh, it's, it's super competitive. And I think, uh, not even the big stage, like even if I go back as far as high school, I was always having to work harder than everyone else. Um, you know, when you're coming from Zim, you know, people don't really rate you. Uh, you having to work extra hard to prove yourself more. Um, so that, I think that's the mentality that has brought me right the way through. Yeah. And that's why I have this mentality of like always wanting to work hard. Um, you know, I don't want to get things for free. Um, I want to work for, for everything that I get. Yes. Um, so I've always had that mentality. But uh, it's, it's very difficult because as you said, um, skill set, your skills have to be on point. Um, your passing has to be good. Your kicking has to be good. You have to be fit. So you've got a lot of things that you need to have yes. in order to to crack the team because you've got someone as good as yourself or maybe not better. He's knocking um, on the door. He's knocking on the door. Um, so you know that you're always having to work hard every single time. You can't slip up. How old, how old are you now, H? Uh, 31 this year. 31. Yeah. And what do you think are your sort of lifeline as a you know just 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 hum just humbly speaking for yourself yeah and 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 critically speaking against yourself yeah or, or advocating for yourself whichever way you want to you know let's yeah. let's be positive Ad, advocate for yourself <laughs> how um how many years uh do you would you would you say you still got un, un, under your belt Look, I, honestly I, I reckon i've probably got maybe another three three years in my in my yeah. legs um i've always been someone who looks after myself and my body um because I think as I've grown older, I've realized that there's a lot more that I need to put into uh, in order to keep up. Yes. Um, you've got young guys that are, that are coming through and that are just putting pressure on you. These guys are fit. These guys are strong. Um, so I need to make sure that, okay, um, yes, I might have the experience and the experience might, might keep me going. Yes. But I need to be as fit. I need to be as strong. Or actually, I need to be fitter and stronger. And stronger. So when it comes to like fitness testing and stuff, I love, I love that kind of stuff. I'm very competitive. So I'm always wanting to 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 lead that, you know, um, Broncos and things like Jeez. that. That's my thing. Frick. Um, I remember. <laughs> I remember. I was. I think it was World Cup. Or, or I don't know what. Not World Cup qualifiers. But anyways, maybe last year or the year before that. Yeah. 
I came to um to a track in the Zim setup. Right? <laughs> so so I remember is, that is, actually. So Perry's like, Reagan, yeah, do you know what? Man, man can have a double. You yeah. Know? There's Perry wagging that lock at like at like 99 <laughs> clicks. And he's like, no, I've got this. I've yeah. got this, you know. And we come and we do a Bronco. And it's all and it's and it's all and it's all the players and the Bronco mm. is just, just it's a bitch. No, it's, it's crazy. It is a, it is it's crazy. It and is nasty. No it matter is, how many times you practice uh, for it or whatever, you'll never get used yes. to it. It's always tough. It was, it was a twenty two back <laughs> so yeah, halfway back, other twenty two back. So yeah, it's it's twenty back, forty back, sixty back, five times. Five times, yeah. as quick as you can. As quick as you can. And um and um and, we, and the time goes, and I was actually I was actually quite fit. Like I didn't yes. do I didn't do badly, but but um but you I think won it by a whole length, <laughs> and I was like this owner is 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 one is a, is like is like the older owner the, the team exactly. the bully of the team, <laughs> and he's still waxing everyone. Yeah. Um, and it, I think that's testament as to what you're saying. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you've got to be fitter, as you've as, you, as you've got to be as you've got to be stronger. You, you, 100%. And already you've got more experience than everyone there. Yeah. So so it's almost a no-brainer when it comes to selecting when mm. it comes to selecting you. You are nine for the team, you know. Yeah. Um, and well, well done to you to be able to keep that fitness level that I'm, I'm that high. I was so shook by how, <laughs> by how. I, I wish I could give a description of how of how of how long you won this by. It's like yeah. it's like running a hundred meters, and, and the owner's still at the fifty meter mark, and, and you've crossed the line. Vision. You know, so yeah. it was like that. It was that wild. How yeah. how how quickly how quickly you did the Bronco. Um, and uh, H, in terms of. In terms of some sort of people mm. you've had in your life, coaches, yeah. mentors, um, you know, family, what, what, um, who, who have been some people that have kept you going, that have given you that, that freaking, that, that kick, yeah. that keep, that, you know, just never give up men, um, mentality? Who's groomed you into Hilton? I think I, I can't go past, uh, you know, my, my beautiful mother, uh, yeah. Winnie. Um, she's been absolutely amazing uh, for, for myself and my brother throughout mm. our journeys. Um, she's always been there for for us. Um, always try, tried to provide for us whatever we need, you know, for us to to be able to excel in what we're trying to do. Um, whether it be at university, in rugby, or whatever it is, you know, she'd always make an effort to be there. Um, even to this day, uh, she'll still come and watch. She'll she'll travel to to watch us play wherever we're playing wow. whenever she gets an opportunity to. Um, so she's been very hands on, very involved. Uh, my brother um, is also you know my biggest inspiration. And yeah. He's he's also pushed me. You know, there have been a couple of times where I've been down and out and um, I haven't backed myself or I feel like oh, maybe it's time, but he's always pushed me. He's always said, no, H, you've still got it in you. Keep going, keep Amen. pushing. Um, so he's always been there for me as well. Um, and then obviously you get, you know, a couple of uh, coaches along the way. <clears throat> Can't go past um, uh, Brendan Dawson, Dorsey. Uh, he gave me my first cap. Um, he made me uh, the captain of, of, of the Sables. Um, and he's always backed me, you know, he's always said, he's always told me, he's always been uh, very honest with me and said, listen, this guy's on your back um, and you need to pull your socks yeah, up, yeah. you know, and he says, you know, and, and that's what I want, you know, captaincy can't keep you in the team. No. You need to earn your position in the team as a player first and then that comes after. So he's always been very honest with me and told me. It's spoken like a true captain. <laughs> hey, no, 100%, really, yeah, but it's true, it's true. Um, <laughs> you want to you want to feel like you're in the team because of the player that you are. Yeah. The leadership and the captaincy comes after. Um, so you, I always feel that, okay, deserve to be in the team first and then everything else comes after. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the relationship that I've had with Torsi. Um, very honest. Uh, Liam Middleton also, um, he was uh, part of Zimbabwe rugby right for a very long time. Um, he gave me my first sevens uh, gig. Yeah. Um, also a brilliant coach. Um, he opened my eyes to how I need to play as a scrum half. I'm not your typical Zimbabwe scrum half. Um, I, I'm not a, a big running scrum half. Um, and I know that's what the people love. They love a running scrum half. Um, but I play a different kind of game. And that's testament to, to Liam's coaching. And that's what helped me get to play in, in, in Europe. Because yeah. obviously they play a different type of game. Um, so I've had to just along the way adapt my game um, in order to fit to see what where, fits. where I'm playing, you know. So those are the, the couple of people that have uh, played a big influence in my in my career. Oh, I appreciate that, and shout out to those people. You yeah. know, they they you know they've obviously molded you into who you are today, which is, which is which is amazing. Mm. And going back to your brother Farai, mm. um, uh, you know, one of my best friends, a very dear friend of mine. Yeah. Um, and it's quite a quite obviously a difficult one, but you know, Farai. Farai's also gone in the, in the professional rugby yeah. scene, you know, and he's played out at um, 
a cast yeah. and that um and that and and that and just played a cast he's, he's at never at the moment he's played for Worcester Warriors for Worcester Warriors yes yeah. and he's in France now he's and he's France and he's doing moment. and he's doing well he's still recovering from an injury uh he's recovered now he he played his first game uh just over a year he was injured for over a year yeah. played his first game I think three weeks ago three okay, four weeks well. ago um so yeah it's good he's uh getting back into it but what's it like even just within the family when are you, you you're both excelling in 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 in, in your you know you both play for the national team, mm. but you but you know you see Ferrari who's got a constant gig at a at a at a club you yeah. know, and 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 what's it like for you having a brother that's 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 there but you also also you know obviously yeah. every every rugby player's dream is to be able to play at, at the highest level mm. at at a club throughout the year yeah you know and you've been to clubs and you've been out of clubs and 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 what's it like for you now at you know seeing I'm seeing your brother there and you maybe not so much there does yeah. that make sense no it does it does make <clears throat> sense um obviously you know I'm, I'm like, he's my best friend so I'm, I'm always super proud of him and um always going to support him and then everything that he does and he does the exact same to me you know we we get on a call every uh probably get on a call three times in a week uh we catch up for like hours yeah. you know and you know seeing him excel drives me uh, to want to become better yeah um yes i may not have got the gigs that i wanted to get um the opportunities that i wanted to get but i know that i can make a difference or my opportunity can come in a different way um and i've seen my opportunity come through zimbabwe rugby yeah um so that's like the angle that i've taken i want to play for my country i'm so passionate about my country but at the same time i want to develop the rugby in this country yeah so that's the avenue that i use and even for i he's also always advocating for Zimbabwe rugby because without Zimbabwe rugby, we would not be where we are. Correct. Um, there's a rule that, uh, that World Rugby bought in a while ago, but obviously things have changed throughout the year. You had to have 10 um, caps for your country in order to get a work permit or anything like okay. that overseas. So without rugby in Zimbabwe, we would never have got that mm. opportunity. Mm. You know, so we're always wanting to give back, to give back to as them. much as we can. Um, but yeah, I'm so stoked for my brother. You know, he went through a very tough time. <clears throat> Worcester, um, they went bankrupt, um, shut shop, and he had no contract, um, had absolutely nothing. And he struggled for a while, you know, whilst I was at Jersey. So like, you know, things were going quite well for me, but at the same time for him, he was struggling. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, something came up and he's just excelled and he's gotten better and better. Um, so now I'm super proud of him and what yeah, he's doing. Good on you, Matt. Good on you, Fatso. You know we love it. <laughs> love um, it. You know it's good and and it's and it's and it's and it's dope that you spur each other on like that. Yeah. You know, I think if there was an energy of ah, oh, he's 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 doing well and ah, oh, I'm jealous. You know, then none of you would even would even prosper. 100%. You know, because it's 100%. it's because it, if you're dragging someone down, it's it's like that crabs in a in a, in a bucket analogy. You know, yeah. it's like if if you put crabs in a back in, in in a bucket, they say um. I say no crab will ever get out because yeah. because each crab is trying to pull trying to pull, was, was pulling, is pull, trying to pull the other one down yeah. and, and then all of you are stuck in the bucket. It's 100%. like no, if a crab's stuck in a bucket, push it out, dog. Like hey, <laughs> flourish, go. go. Keep going. You know you're on. You know exactly. you know you're on. Get up. Mm. Um, so no, I think um, I, I think that's great that. Um, so you so you're committed to Zim rugby at the moment. Eh? Committed this, to Zim you, rugby, yeah. Committed to Zim rugby. It's not like an Eddie moment. Jones commitment we're talking about. Eh? Ah, so no, it's, it's, not a, like, it's a full on. Don't worry, I'm not having Zoom meetings <laughs> with other people at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're probably committed to Zim probably rugby. Probably committed. Um, you know, I have I had an opportunity to go to France last year. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it just didn't make sense for me at the time. Um, so I just thought, you know, I'd rather be here. And also, I'm kind of transitioning out of rugby obviously rugby is still the main thing yeah uh, but i'm looking at what's going to happen after yeah um what's that looking like for you yo it's still, still a work in progress yeah. um you know i'm doing a bit of a uh, bit of everything a bit of bit, uh, bits and bobs um uh, i've taken on the an influencer role um doing some influencer work yes uh, which has been pretty cool <coughs> excuse me um it's not something that i ever thought i would do uh, i've never been a person who loves to be out there I've always just thought, you know, rugby is the main thing. But then I had a very good conversation with, uh, with Sia Kulisi. And he told me that, so I asked him, like, how do you manage everything? Because he's, he's a superstar. He's playing rugby, but at the same time, he's doing so much work outside of rugby. I asked him, how do you balance everything? And he says, the most important thing is make sure you do things that you want to do when you're still relevant. Because when you're not relevant anymore, mm. no one is going to want to... Um, no one's going to want to want to work with you or be interested in you. So if you look at the things that he's doing, 
He's building those relationships with people because he's, you know, Sia Khaleesi comes he's relevant now. Box. He's very relevant. Um, and once rugby ends, you'll see that, you know, work and deals and all of that, they'll just continue going because you've had that relationship with brands, with corporates. Yes. Um, Beast, Beast did the exact same thing. And Beast, um, Beast did it very well there. Exactly. And just after that, after they won that World Cup, you know, he's and he knew his career was over, but straight, he's but straight but into work. He latched on to it, you know, whatever opportunity, it. America, he went and played a bit there. And, exactly. You know, and he, and he, was, he was wise about it. And if, you, if you're doing the same thing, yeah. It's and, great. And, and you know, that's, and that's what I'm also trying to educate um, guys that, are, that I'm playing with here that might not necessarily see the value of it uh, because they're so focused on, okay, rugby, rugby, rugby. Okay, I want to get into sables. I want to get into cheaters. You get in there and you play. Obviously, rugby must remain the main thing. Like, you must never go away from that, but you must, be able, be, but you must be able to split time between, okay, when it's time for rugby, I'm working on rugby. If I need to do my extras, I'm doing my extras. But then when I've got time to do other things, I do other things. Yeah. Um, because when, when rugby is especially in Zim, sport doesn't give back a lot in this country. Which is a, which is a massive shame. Which is terrible. Because there's so, so many sportsmen and women give so much. For years and years For of their years. life. And their peak years of their life. And exactly. They, and, they, and, they, and you know, from their, from their 18s to their 35s. You exactly. know? And you're like, you've given everything you exactly. can to the country. And then when you retire, you actually sit back and you're like, okay, what was I actually doing for 10 years of my life? Because I've got nothing to show for it. Yeah, my name is out there. I captained the Sables. Cool, then what? You know, I've got nothing to show. So that's why I'm like trying to educate guys yes. and I'm trying to work on it. You know, initially I used to get you know, teased a lot. Like, oh, Hilton's going for photo shoots. He's doing this, he's doing that. And he's not focused on rugby. But I still made sure that when it came to training, when it came to, to rugby, you're, make sure that was the main you're thing. still doing the Bronco the quickest. You're, 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 I'm, you're I'm still, still getting in the yeah. gym. I'm, I'm, I'm going out to kick in the rain uh, where other guys have just been like, no, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Uh, out of my own time, um, you know, go and do fitness on my, by myself on a field. Find a field and just do uh, fitness tests and then just do fitness by myself. Um, but then I still knew that. That takes okay. a different type of DF in your mind there. That no, takes a different type of it's dog. It's tough. That's I promise just, you it's tough. Uh, you wake up and you, it's raining. That's the last thing you want to do. Uh, me, I'm blankets, dog. I'm <laughs> blankets, blankets. Okay. I'm chilling. Netflix and chill. No, but Jack, now... I'm not chilling. I'm not, I'm not a lazy head. I'm not a lazy head. No, really, I'm working. But, 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 but you yeah. see, that, that's the thing, though. So that's the mentality you need to have. But you need to create something for yourself whilst you're yeah. still relevant. Yeah. So opportunities to, to meet with, with, with people, business people, um, sports people. Like I've built a very good relationship with Raza. And... You know, he's taught me things that he's doing outside of cricket. Um, you know, and we've partnered in a couple of things as well. You know, where we're looking to improve, um, you know, the livelihood of other sports people that we play with and educate, obviously, myself on the rugby side and himself on the cricket side. Yes. Um, because we've obviously had the you know, opportunity to play outside the country and whatever we've learned, we're trying to bring it back here so that we you know, educate these guys. I think you often you often find with um with athletes not just in Zim but around the world you know that um that because sports is all they've ever known. Mm. I think what sports is trying to do now is even give people op opportunity to study and and yes. have and, and and have degrees and as well as and well, as well as you're playing at the highest level. Yeah. But it didn't used to do that in the past, yeah. right? So when people would finish sport, they were like a fish out of water because yeah. they, they, they had no idea what to do. Sports all they've ever known. Exactly. And um and then now to come into the big bad world mm. per se is um is tough. You yeah. know, it's a tough adjustment, and you see people go through depression, and you yes. see people go through. You know, I, I watch um a podcast, or not a podcast, uh, like a YouTube vid, a vlog of Brian Mujati. Yes. Know? Yes. I, I don't know if you no, follow that. Life the, of Brian. The life of Brian. Yes. Frank, I mean, it's one of the best, one of Brilliant. the best vlogs I've seen on YouTube. Yeah. And it's you know he's got twelve thousand views an episode, which is dope. Yeah. But I, I actually don't think he does it for the views. He just does it one he likes putting exactly. out content but but he's one of the most in interesting people i have i've ever seen and 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 he went he had a shoulder injury yeah. just that we've learned through through his vlogs and mm. you know and and uh, the irb just didn't wouldn't give him insurance money for it and, and he wouldn't get paid and <laughs> and and you know this guy was now sort of delivering things in a van and you're like yeah. reckon, but he's also the most intellectual clever person exactly. you meet and a great athlete and it's just like it's sad to see when when sport it brings people to their knees like that yeah. but I'm not, I, I don't know what he's up to today I would love yeah. to have a chat with him and Definitely. speak to him you know it's so sad you know because you know some people have the opportunities to um, to make sure that you know they're looking after themselves after rugby and some people don't have someone who's um, chatting to them influencing them to say okay listen go this route so in Brian's case he might not have had that um, 
that person who's in his ear to say, listen, go this route. You yes. Know? Make sure that you're doing this. Make sure that you're doing that. Yeah. Um, because it ends. And I mean, Brian was, he was a, he's a legend, man. He's a legend. Brilliant rugby player. Gun. Uh, you know, came from Zim, you know, did the, the hard went, went, went to the Springboks, played, went to the got Springboks. seven caps, whatever. Exactly. You know? When he played, he played some of the top clubs in, in Europe, uh, won European Cups. So I think it's always important to have that um, that mentor, yeah. uh, someone of influence, who's just in your ear saying, listen, go this route. Abs- abs- don't do absolutely. this, don't do that. Because like you said, it also prepares you for what's to come. Because yeah. sport's very short. And it's, it, it ends... It, Goes by very, and goes very quickly. In a flash, eh? Very quickly. And the highs are high and the lows are low. The lows are very, very low. And you know, how I realized that your know, time has flown. Last year, we were uh, based in Cape Town before the World Cup qualifiers. So I was rooming with uh, uh, Brendan Maruma. He, he just come from the under 20s. Um, so now our, our manager uh, needed our, our birth dates and, and things like that. So he asked guys to, to come and see him. So both of us went to see the manager. I uh, gave him my birth date. Then Brennan gave his birth date, and I was just like, "What is going on here?" He, made, he said like 2002 or something <laughs> like that. I was like, "Come <laughs> on, what? come on!" I was like, "What is this?" I was like, "What is this?" Two thousand, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Um, so yeah, dude, it's 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 crazy when you just um, it goes by so quickly. So you always need to make sure that you have a plan. Let's pivot very quickly. Um, talking about your your Stellenbosch stint last mm. last sort of last year. Yeah. Okay. This this is um this is now going to di- di- just dive into a bit of where Zim rugby is and yeah. and what and what our progression is going to be. So we go to Stellen we we go to Stellenbosch. This is as a as a World Cup qualifier warm up yeah. to sort of play in the Curry Cup yes. and 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 get out and get exposure and yeah. get get players get like match fit and game ready. Yeah. And we're playing this the sort of the top. Curry Cup sides in, in, in South Africa, yeah. right? In Namibia. <clears throat> Anyways, <clears throat> a lot of money was given to Zim yeah. for that. So, and, and, and credit to Dorsey, he managed to raise a lot of money mm. for, um, for that tour. Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard an astronomical, I've, 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 I've heard a figure, I'm not going to put it out there, but it was an astronomical amount of money that, um, that they managed to raise. Yeah. And, 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 and they raised it and people go on this tour, you're there, you're in Stellenbosch for three months. Yes. For three months. Yeah. And, um, and we come back and we didn't manage to qualify. Yeah. Heart, heartbreaking for Zimbabwe. Ha- heartbreaking for all the fans, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I think to myself, okay, Zimbabwe cries for money, for sport, which, yes. which, which we need, mm-hmm. which we need the money. I'm not saying don't cry, for, cry for money. Yeah. And give us money. We want the money, you know. But when the money comes um, and then we still don't deliver, mm. what's, what, is the, what is to blame now? Who, who, who have we... Because... Unfortunately, people always want someone to blame or something to Definitely. blame. Un- unfortunately, Definitely. that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, if this didn't go right, <clears throat> blame him. Blame him. Yeah. Okay. But but what what rather than let's not use the word blame. What's the cause of Zim rugby still not being able to qualify and then because now people won't want to give money for the next four years. True. You know. True. So how so how how does this work? What's this what's this vicious cycle we're in? Yeah. H. Look, I think um, as you said, <clears throat> the preparations last year are probably the best that I've ever experienced in terms of uh, uh, games before uh, the qualifiers, just, in, just how we were treated, how we, we were treated like professionals. You know, I've, I felt like I was in a professional setup. I felt like a professional rugby player, which should be normal. That's how it should be yeah. the whole time. We, we are players of the national team. But we got that and you know, things were, were done properly and the build up to the whole thing um, did very well. Obviously, we, you know, we took a bit of a, a hit in the beginning of the Curry Cup we still had um, a lot of uh, local base players that hadn't had the, the opportunity to play there. So they were learning on, on the job. But then as the tournament went on and guys started to get released from their clubs and filter into the team, we got stronger and you saw results started to come through. We started to win games towards the end. Um, so in terms of preparation, it was good. But as we're chatting off air, I think the biggest problem is that People are coming on board and we are so grateful, as you said, so, so grateful that people are coming on board. But people are coming on board three months before um, a World Cup qualifier, six months before a World Cup qualifier. If you look at tier one teams, um, a coach is announced first year after the World Cup or before the World Cup, and then they've given him a four-year contract. So he's got four years to work with a team. Yeah. Yeah. testing combinations, bringing people in and out. By the time the next World Cup comes, 
He's had four years with these guys. He's worked on them and they've been together for four years. Absolutely. As a group. So now they know each other. They've gone through highs. They've gone through lows. We are going through like a crash course where it's like three months, you know, get things going. Let's get everything going. And I still say that like even a guy like Steve Hansen, if you brought him in to Zimbabwe rugby and gave him two months, three months to work with the team, yeah. we still wouldn't be able to qualify. Four years might be a bit of a stretch. 100%. That's a lot of money that has to, that has to come who's, in. And who's going who's, who, who's gonna to back a team with that much money? Exactly. Where with, with, with they haven't shown that they're, 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 that they're, they're capable of performing. Not, I'm not <clears throat> taking away, uh, yeah. away from the players, but who's going to back someone? Who's no one's going to, no, no one, 100%. Because now you're trying to invest so much money into something that you, into don't, something know that you don't know that you're going to get the returns, you know? So, look, if we, if we looked at like maybe a, a two-year a two-year period, a um, year and a half, where we can get guys together, training together every single time because Zimbabwe constantly flies people in and out. Yeah. And the only reason why Namibia have beaten us, this is, this is what I believe. Namibia have beaten us not because they're, they're better than us, um, not because they're working harder than us. They've just been together for a long time. That group has been together it's since so the last World Cup. Yeah, yeah. If you look at, if you take 2015 World Cup and if you take this year's World Cup and you look Compare at the, the teams look at the squads maybe two or three people have come in uh, max five but the rest is the same yeah those guys constantly constantly play together and like for example if I'm a scrum off and I've got a fly off but my fly off keeps changing every single time one time we use this guy and then the next time he's not available so we bring in another guy when are you ever gonna have that synergy there's no synergy. So that's the only way that we can get that right. And is, it's, Dorsey, is Dorsey the right man for the job? I believe he's the right man for the job um, if he has the backing. He does, he does not have the backing at the moment. Um, I've worked with him. I've worked hard, like, over a couple of years with him. Um, we just missed out 2014 um, through, uh, I think, a, a decision that was made um, by, um, well, look, I was young at the time, so I actually don't know who made the decision, whether it was the captain or came from the coaches to this day. Uh, you know, you I just, still you don't know. Still uh, don't you know. want to keep your job. You want to keep your job. <laughs> <laughs> to keep my job. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but, um, you know, I just feel that if a coach is selected, he must be backed and fully backed. Yeah. Like, the union must come on board and say, okay, listen, we have picked you as the man. What do you need? And we'll try our level best to make sure that happens. Because, as I said, I've worked with Dorsey for a long time. He's missed training sessions to go and ha ha have meetings uh, with people to sponsor us. That's not his job. It should never be happening. His job is to coach. And they must let him coach free and fully, just and only coach. And he he shouldn't be a fundraiser for the team. He should not be fundraising. Yeah. There should be other people doing that kind of stuff. So that's why I feel that you, we're not getting the best out of him. Has he been there for a long time? Yes, he has. Should other people get opportunities? Maybe they should. But... He should be given a, a proper chance where he, he gets to do what he wants to do with the right backing. That's fair. I am, I, and I completely agree with it. Mm. Um, but if we're not going to get backing, how, you know, even the next day that comes in, is, you're going to say the exact same thing yep. and, and further and further than that. So, so do you give people a chance? I don't know. Look, I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm just a loving fan of, of Zimbabwe <laughs> rugby who's, who, who throws us two cents yes. here and there. And I think like the rest of the country does. And the reason we're so passionate is because, is because we love sport. 100%. So we, and, we, and we want our national team to do well, right? 100%. So, and I think sport has the ability, the uncanny ability in, in any country to unite it. Yeah. And we've and we've seen it time mm. and we see it with the spring box. Yes. You know, with all the trouble that they go through in South Africa yeah. and all the racism and this and this. But when it's Bok Day, baby. Everyone, when it's Bok Day. Everyone. Everyone's, everyone's together. On. Everyone's, everyone's together. on. And that's what that's what happens when cricket's being played in yeah. Zim. Hey, you, you you look at Harari Sports Club. Oh. You look at this last these these last qualifiers, qualifiers now. Crazy. I've never seen a spirit in Zimbabwe where, yes. where, where you look left, you look right, black, white, Indian, everything in Everyone between. Everyone is together. Everyone is just freaking yeah. on board, you know? And that's what, and that's what riles us on, you know? Mm. That's what spurs us on. And it's almost like a curse for Zimbabwe. Like, we always get to the, 
to the last, Semis. to like the last, yep. like the qualifier we lose by t- 10 runs or uh, the, the, against Namibia we lose by a try. And you're like, what? Come on, Zim. Like, What's going we're there. Yep. We're, there. we're literally on the week. We could qualify and mm. it's, it's like a curse. I think we're, we're cursed at the moment. Literally. And we need to break that curse. Literally. We need, we need to break to. it. We need to. Because, you know? I mean, I'm, like I'm saying, I've been involved with Zim rugby for 10 years. I've played in lots of finals. Played in the uh, Olympic qualifier final where we scored a try to win the game. The ref said, there's time for a kickoff. We kicked. Kenya got the ball, ran the length, scored a try. But the, the route had gone um, for, to qualify for the World Series. Uh, we played in Hong Kong, made it to the finals, played against Russia, exact same thing. Um, against uh, Kenya in the 15s, we needed a try to qualify for the World. We just needed to win by a bonus point. We had scored three. Kenya had a yellow card. We get a penalty, I think 30 meters out. What would anyone do? Kick for touch, mull them over, score your fourth try. Shh. Missed out on that. Shh. And then That's... now in uh, last year, 2022, I uh, lost by a try to yeah. Namibia. So it's just, you're right. It, it constantly it's happens. Just... And it's like always there. It's it literally stop, always there. Stop giving us this much hype and then, <laughs> and then dropping us in the last minute. Rather, Come on. Rather just leave from Jeez, the beginning. The fans, I'm just sorry, the fans. The I'm on your side. I love you. And I just want this to work. You right. know, but, um, but you know, that's, and that's, and that's, that's sport for you as yeah. well, you know. And like you said, the highs are very high and the lows are very low. And mm-hmm. and unfortunately, they're low for the country and, yeah. they're, and they're low. It's and, and you know, when it's high, it's high for the country. Yeah. And speaking about how yeah. Zim rugby is always cursed, right? The, and Zim sport in general. Rugby, netball, cricket, cricket. whatever, whatever, whatever <laughs> sock, soccer, soccer, you know, whatever. Um, Kirsty Coventry actually made a statement the other day, so I believe, and, <clears throat> and it was big news. Yeah. And she says that, that ZRU is complaining that they don't get money. Mm. Yeah. Ministry of Sport gave them 250k. Um, and where, where, where is this, where is this 250k gone? You know, so, so, so basically what I'm trying to say is, there's always complaints that 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 ZRU doesn't get money, yeah. okay, and it's also it's also a trend in Zimbabwe. Mm. Uh, you know, you, I mean, unions get this, all this money. Where does this money go? One, who manages the money? What, what, what we want to know. Yeah. But why yeah. is it not trickling down to the players? Why are players still not getting paid? Why why is this still a thing in Zimbabwe in 2023? Yeah. You know. And like you said, I mean, <clears throat> I think all sports unions, you know, like like I've said, I've had conversations with. Um, people from football, people from cricket, um, netball, all complaining about the same things. We're all complaining about the same things. And I've had um, meetings with, with the Honourable Minister, Kirsty Coventry, and of ways that we, try, we can try and, and, and build and get Zim Rugby to where it needs to be. And we've had some very, very good conversations about that. And look, I think her, her ministry is playing their part but uh, we're not seeing, not seeing anything, and we're constantly complaining about the same things over and over again. And it's, you know what? It's almost <clears throat> laughable. I'm sorry. No, definitely. And you know what? It's like it's not. I'm, I'm going to say a statement that uh, might be a bit fifty-fifty. It's not about the money. We we do care about playing for our country. Yeah. But we need to be rewarded for playing for our country. Yeah. You know, you need to get something out of it. H, don't you say can't. that. Or else the money will never come, boss. Bro, don't, bro. don't say no, that. No, no. No. Look, I mean, anywhere else in the world, it's going to happen where you know players are going to be asking for their money. I just see now uh, Pakistan, uh, the cricket side, might boycott the World Cup because they haven't been paid for the last mm. four months. So it's happening everywhere. So it's, we need to be we need to be paid our money, like because you're you're sacrificing your time, right? You some of us. So if you we're not in a fully professional setup, so people have to go to work. Right. So now imagine you're playing for your country. You have to get up early, go to gym, do a gym session early, go to work, do an eight to five. After that eight to five, you have to go to training in the evening. Right. And then when you go away on a tour, uh, your company might say, we're not going to pay you for the time you're away. Where's that money meant to come from? You should be getting paid, obviously, from, from your sport or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Right. But now when that money doesn't come, you're not getting money from there. You're not getting money from work. How are you meant to make ends meet? So, in Ministry of Sports pays that 250k. Where does that money go? Who does it? Where does so it go to? It will go to the union. I'm, to I'm, the ZRU. I'm, I'm assuming it will go to the ZRU yeah. because they obviously have the relationship. <clears throat> ZRU, SRC. Um, so does SRC, ministry. ZRU all control that money? I think it. I, look, I, I can't. 
say, or I, I don't know the ins and outs, right? But so for example, last year we had the Sables Trust. So I can speak about that. We had the Sables Trust because I, I know about the Sables Trust. We created a trust where all the sponsorship money that we get goes into this trust. So it's not handled by ZRU. It's, it comes in and it's for the Sables, it's, it's the Sables Trust. Um, and then we had people on the Sables Trust uh, board and they kind of decided where the money goes to flights, to kit, to whatever it may be. They're the ones that decided. But I know from the sports ministry, I think that money has to go to the union. Um, and then, and then and the then union must 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 disperse must it. Disperse it. Well, it's clearly not being dispersed from um, from them, which is which is where they they or there yep. lies the issue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there lies the issue. Um, that's just how you've explained yep. it. The way I've read it is yep. is that is that. And it's it's something that we constantly <clears throat> keep. We, we mean, this is the reason why you know you ask you ask now why aren't we qualifying? Because we're not getting the best people, right, to play. So, for example, if everything was, was, good, was good and fine and I was not the best player, but we could find someone else who's playing in Ireland or whatever it is and is a better scrum off than me, our country gets to go to the World Cup because we're getting the best of the best. Which is what it should be. Which is what it should be. But now you're hearing stories of how you don't get paid, you know, your money doesn't come. Who wants to play? No. No, and this is, and this is, and this is something Zim Sport needs needs to fix. Um, yeah, hundred you know, percent. Just that just it just needs it just needs to be fixed. You know, if you look at it, like cricket, cricket are getting it right. Um, they're getting paid. Whatever they're doing, they're doing it well. I mean, yeah. Credit to their union. Uh, whatever they're doing, they they're doing it well. And I've had I've had opportunities to to meet with the MD, to meet with the CEO of cricket, just to find out like how they're going about things. Obviously, they get you know a huge sum of money from ICC, but. The players are happy. The players perform. Absolutely, and the players are performing. And they're performing. And so, and it's great. It's you know? great to see. And that's what you want. So, I hope our union can take something out of uh, the cricket's uh, books, you know, implement it into our sport, so that we can get to where we need to get to. What's let's let's turn this positive. What's what's a positive thing you've seen, and, and you know, what are some positive changes you've seen in the time that you've been in the Zim Sable setup? What are what are some things that are Positive. I think the opportunities that <clears throat> people have had to play for Zim, which has allowed them to be seen to get contracts overseas. Um, you get so many guys that, uh, you know, come from all walks of life. Um, you know, guys are catching ETs from Bari to come to training. Uh, like, you know, one of the one of the examples we always use is of uh, a Blythe, um, who's at the Sharks. Driller. Driller. Driller used to catch uh, combis to come from home. Uh, to to training, Driller was like a sixty kg, sixty five, seventy kg flanker. I remember when he rocked up to um, Super, uh, Super Sport Challenge uh, when we were based in South Africa. This was a couple of years ago, twenty nineteen, I think. And um, he came through, and we're looking at this guy like, well, what position is this guy? Like a scrum off or something like that. He was tiny, but you saw the opportunities that Zimbabwe rugby did, and through through Jason uh, Maritz and Dorsey, you know they they saw. A talent. A talent. And they nurtured him. They, they made sure that he got the right supplements. They made sure that he got the right food. You know, he put on size and bulk during that time. Um, managed to get uh, a contract to UWC. Managed to get his degree. And now he's at the shop. Unbelievable. So those are some of the things that you know, Zim Rugby have, uh, have done. You know, they've bettered people's lives. Yes. There are a lot, of, a lot of guys' lives that have been bettered through, through this whole process. And it shouldn't just be a few. It should be. It should be everyone. Hundred percent. You know, if someone if someone plays for the Boca, they're yeah. probably going to get a contract anyway in the world. Mm. You know, someone plays for even Namibia per se. A lot of those guys will be playing. Will be playing. Yes. And we need to get to the level that someone's playing for Zimbabwe. They can be playing at the highest level yeah. anywhere. You know. And when they get to the highest level, we still want them to come back Correct. and play for Zimbabwe. Correct. Because you see, they kind of say, "Okay, that's my avenue to get out. I'm good now. I'm not. I'm not going to come back." But simply because of everything that's happening within the union, within Zim Rugby, where you're not getting paid on time and all of those things. You can't commit. Because at the end of the day, you need to look after yourself. Yeah. You've got bills to pay. But a family to feed. Family it's... to feed. If you can't... Um, keep up with that. If you can't keep up, then, you know, people aren't going to come. Just to wrap this up, H, <clears throat> Rug I'm Rugby World Cup's on. Yep. I don't know when this episode is going to air, but um, but um, at the current at the current stage, we haven't got to quarterfinals or yep. anything yet. It's um, you know, so so um, so so rugby world cups on, okay? Um, big. 
big World Cup ahead of us. Huge. Huge. I want. I would love to hear your your predictions as a as a. I just want to give my one one two cents. Yep. Australia. I support Australia. <laughs> Australian, okay. Are you sure? Uh, what? Oh, what we'll, an absolute, we'll allow you to change teams, don't worry. What an absolute shambles. Absolute Eddie, me. Eddie Jones, like what you said, give a coach four years to finish his tenure. Dave, I think Dave Rennie should have just freaking finished, finished up, up until the World Cup for it. starters. And then you bring in Eddie Jones and he's just, he's having interviews with Japan and, and you know, he's like it's freaking... It's a mess and he's leaving out... Quaid, Quaid, Hooper, Hooper, you know, it's like Foley, Foley. you're like, wait, surely, uh, you know, come on, you, you know, have some decorum. Anyways, Aussie are done, yep. they're out, they're, they're they're, this is, this is Aussies. <laughs> um, but we predict a, a France, South Africa say, um, quarter, yep. New Zealand, Ireland, another quarter, yep. but where's this World Cup going, in your opinion? Bro, it's, it's crazy, uh, I don't know where it's going, it's probably the hardest World Cup um, to decide on who's going to take it, especially these quarters. You know, you would have said um, France. You would have gone France, but then Dupont is uh, 50-50 at the moment, obviously with his cheekbone being uh, being broken and you know, there's talks of him getting a mask for him to play. Um, and if you look at France for the last... Is he the best player in the world at the moment? 100%. No one better best, than Dupont. Eh? No one better than Dupont. Everything revolves around Dupont um, for France. For, for, for France. Every, and he does everything. He creates, he, he does everything. So now, when they're playing against the... I don't think they've been tested, okay? Apart from the New Zealand game, I don't think they've been tested. So it'll be quite interesting to see how they go against, um, against, against the, the box. box, whether DuPont plays or not. The but box, whoever loses that, it's going to be such a shame for the World Cup. 100%. Because now you've got no France or South Africa or South going Africa. semis to or final. Exactly. And you almost want France to win. Yeah, France, like the, France at home, baby. It's, at home, crowds, that kind of stuff. You know, the atmosphere, the, the, the energy at the World Cup will, will continue. Now France get knocked out. It could be, uh, could be you know, become dead. Uh, the box, when they played against Ireland the other day, you know, you would have thought that the box would take it with their 7-1 split. Yeah. But that got dismantled. So now, probably Ireland are... In with a strong chance. Eh? With a strong chance to take it. I think as long as Sexton... Stays fit. Um, he is so good. Talk about a mature player and just composure, experience. Exactly. Like yeah, you, that's, you, that's, you can't, what, you that's, can't what, that's what I'm trying to bring hey, to the right. Stage your name. Bring my, bring my gray hairs <laughs> out. <laughs> stage but, your name, see, boy. Johnny, Johnny Six is 38. He's still going. Boy. He's still going. He's still going. You know, he's obviously taking care of his body. 100%. And no one can even fight his positioning on the field. No one yep. can say he doesn't deserve to be there because he's 38. There's, exactly. He is, he is, he's Johnny. And yeah, and similar and to you. You can't fight it. He's running the team. So I think if he stays fit... Ireland with a very good chance. Uh, so I'm going to make a call now. Go on. France Island. Final. Final. I like that call. And I'm going to further the call. 20 Baka. Huh? Yeah. France, France, France for the World Cup in France. If DuPont plays. If DuPont plays. <laughs> <laughs> DuPont plays. Um, H, I think, um, yeah, well that's, well, that's great insight. Yeah. And, um, you know, thank you. For your time, you know, it's um, and thank you for, for coming on and, and spreading a bit and just spreading a, a bit of shining a light on what's happening in Zim sport in this country. What's what's happening within with, with, within the Zim rugby system, things that you think we can do to change it. Mm. Um, it's so obviously all things we sort of know, yeah. you know, but it's also it's also just good when we just hear clarity from 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 the horse's mouth, you know, because like I said, all of us want the best for yeah. Zimbabwe, and, and no matter what happens, we're all on the same team. Whatever, no matter what people say or do mm. or cuss or say, get him out, do do this, do do. No, yeah. at like ultimately we're one, and we want the best for our country. Is what everyone wants. So that's the only thing that unifies us is that we want the best, yeah. right? Um, but if but if there's if there's one if there's one message or anything you want to part mm. or anything you want to just leave by saying or you know just just um, a couple of words you want to say for yourself even just just whatever it is this yeah. is your camera lovely um, be um, be yourself and we'd love to hear it you know yeah no look I just um, obviously just want to thank everyone um, all our supporters fans who have um, always been there for us through good times and bad times we've obviously gone through many good times a lot of bad times. Um, but you continue to uh, support the way that you always come out and support us when we're playing um, is huge. And I mean, just the, the, the feelings that we got a couple of weeks ago when we played against Uganda and we managed to beat Uganda um, on day one of the Olympic qualifiers, it just shows the passion that people have. And that passion carries you a very long way. And if all our supporters weren't there that day, uh, you know, it would have been a very, very tough day. So. Mm. Please continue to support uh, Zimbabwe Rugby. We have got so many talented people, so many talented players. 
um, we need to get back to where we belong, and that's you know playing with with the, with the big dogs at at World Cups. And I truly believe that with with support from everyone, if everyone plays their part, uh, we'll be able to get to that stage. So um, get involved, support the boys, and let's get rugby to where it needs to be. Amen. There you have it, folks. Hilton Mudariki, the captain of our Sables rugby team. Um, we thank you for his time. We thank you for your time. Mm. And um, thank you and thank you again for your support, like, like what H says, but thank you for supporting this podcast. Like, share, subscribe, do all the fun bits. All right, cheers, H. Ciao, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks, H. Thank you, brother.